Hi, from this lecture, we're going to talk about statistics. This is the introduction to the course. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to discuss what are the main objectives of statistics, what does it learn, what are its main definitions and denotations. In the beginning of the course, I would like to give you the famous quote, say, by the Benjamin Disraeli, who is the former British Prime Minister. Once he say that there are three types of the lies, just a lie, damned lie, and statistics. So this quote uh, shows uh, the, uh, the power of the numbers, particularly the usage of the statistics in order to improve or boost the weak arguments. Also, it may refer to the wrong interpretation of the data using the statistics. And particularly, one of the objectives, what we are going to say, objectives of this course is to teach you how to make the proper impressions, proper interpretations of the data. So the data are the collection of observations, such as measurements, genders, or the survey results. And it's one of the main topics of this course, of the statistics. In the singular form, the data is called the datum, is the single data value. Statistic, uh, statistics is about the summarizing, collection, interpreting, and analyzing the data. And it can help you to make the conclusions and, and the decisions using this analyzation of the data. No matter what is your profession, you're going to make the decisions at some point, and statistics and statistical analysis in particularly should help you to make those decisions correctly and efficiently. So let's. Uh, so there are two types of the statistics. One is called the descriptive statistics. It is about the collection and summarizing the data. For example, after the exam, we can collect the scores of the students. The first student has got 87%, the second has got 54, the so third 23, fourth student has got 68%. We can collect all of them to one table, and this is the part of the descriptive statistics. So after we've collected the data, we can interpret them using the tables or the graphs, for example, the bar chart or the histogram. So it can show us the, the data. And so it can show us the data more better, visualize, visualize this. And, and also we're going to talk about the other type of the statistical graphic tools like uh, the dot plot, and it can help us to interpret the data in a better way. So another type of statistics is called the inferential statistics is, uh, is about the making the conclusions about the whole population. For example, I would like to make the, pop, so the conclusion about the population of the country or about the whole world, but collecting the data from the whole population might be infeasible. So what we can do is we can just choose some part, so some members of the population which we are going to collect them to, to, to some, some group, which is called the sample. And by analyzing the data taken from the sample, we can make the conclusions about the whole population. So the population and the sample is the, one of the important notations of statistics. So the population is the complete collection of all the measurements, all the data that being considered. And census is the collection of the data from each member of the population. And the sample is the subcollection of the population. And I would like to give you a couple of examples in order to give you some impression about what do I mean by saying the population and the sample. For example, we can say that the whole students of Uzbekistan is going to be the population. And what I can do is I, I, I would like to measure the, the IQ scores of all the students in, uh, in Uzbekistan. The, the all the students in this case of Uzbekistan is going to be the population. And we can create the small samples in order to, um, so the probably testing and measuring the IQ scores of all the students in Uzbekistan is infeasible. And what we can do is we can choose the small group by testing the IQ scores of that small group, we can make the conclusions about the, all the students in Uzbekistan. And the main question is how to create those small groups. For example, we can take a sample uh, we can take all the students in our group as a sample, or we can take the, all the female students of our university as a sample, or the, all the male students of our university as a sample, and so on. So the, choosing the sample is one of the really important questions in statistics. 
So another example uh, of the so which shows here the difference between the population and the uh, and the sample is the Gallup poll about the identity theft. So the so the Gallup poll is a company which makes surveys around the world, so mainly in the U.S. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to know uh, about the whether the population of U.S. has some fears. Uh, is, has some worries about the uh, whether their identities is going to be stolen, identity credential is going to be stolen. So the U.S. population is more than 328 million. So asking every person about the worries about the identity theft would be really, really difficult and infeasible. So what they did is they took uh, 1,013 adults. They asked them about whether they worry about the identity theft. And 66% of them, they said yes. So they have some fears about this. And by make, so, in, in, so depending on this conclusion from the sample, they are making the conclusion about the whole population. So they make the conclusion that 66% of the whole population of US uh, has some fears and worries about the identity theft. So again, the main question is how to choose this 1013 people. How, what is the, how to choose the sample? So is it like they go outside to the street and choose people randomly? or there was some system behind of choosing these people, creating the samples. So ways of creation of the samples is called the sampling methods. So there are different types of the sampling methods. In statistics, we're going to talk about four different, uh, so four common sampling methods. The simple random selection, the stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and the systematic sampling. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about each of the sampling methods in a little bit more in details. And I would like to give you some examples in order to, so in order to differentiate the sample sampling methods. So the simple random selection is when we choose the people from the population randomly, where every member of the population have equal chances to be chosen. For example, if the population has the people, like, a, so like a males, female, children, and the elderly people, we can choose some of them randomly to our sample. So this is called the simple random selection. Another way of sampling is called the stratified sampling, is when we are going to split the population into the different groups by the different categories. We call those groups as the stratas. So once we create the stratas, we are going to choose the people or choose the members from each of the stratas randomly. For example, our, popu so our population may be um, split into the categories like uh, the children, um, the, the youngster, uh, the male, female, and, and the uh, elderly people. Then, so this is our stratus. So we've got one, two, three, four, five different stratus. What we are going to do is we're going to choose the members from each of the stratus randomly. For example, we can choose one male randomly, one children randomly, one child randomly, or one female randomly, and so on. So another way of sampling is called the cluster sampling. So this is very similar to the stratified method, and in practice, people really confuse about the differences between the cluster method and the stratified method. So the cluster sampling is when, uh, when you are going to divide the population into the stratus, then before we just choose the people from each of the stratas always. So now in the cluster method, we are going to choose the stratas first of all randomly, some of the stratas. Then we're going to choose the members from each of the so the from the chosen stratas randomly. For example, I've got again the population. So previously we've chosen the members from each of the stratas. So now we're going to choose some of the stratas randomly. For example, this might be the males and the females. Okay. Then we're going to choose the people from e each of the stratas, which we have chosen uh, randomly, um, again, randomly. So let, let's talk about like, the difference between the cluster method and the stratified method in the example of the mobile data usage in Uzbekistan. So you would like to know how the mobile data is used in Uzbekistan by the different category of the people. So what you can do is you can create a sample using the cluster sampling. So what you can do is you can take, you can, so you can divide the, the country, the population by the different geographical location, by the cities, for example, which is really easy. So, for, so you've got the, uh, the population, 12 regions, 
And what you are going to do is you would like to first, so you need to first of all choose some, so your stratas are the CTs. First of all, you need to choose some of the stratas randomly. For example, you can randomly choose the Tashkent, Samarkand, and Fergana. Okay. Then you are going to choose some people from each of the CDs and include to your sample in order to make some conclusions about the mobile data usage in data set. And the stratified sampling would be to divide the whole population in the whole country into the ages or into the wages, the income rate. Then choose the people from each of the categories. For example, you would like to divide the whole population into the two categories, the males and females. Then you choose some, uh, some number of the males, some number of the females from each of the two categories randomly. So this is called the stratified. The cluster is when we create the stratas. Then we choose, first of all, the stratas randomly. Then we choose the members from the chosen stratas. And the last way of sampling is, is called the systematic sampling, is when we choose that when we, so it's kind of making, putting the people to one line and choosing the people in some system. For example, you, you, you might be interested to put the males in one line, okay, and give them some numbers, say so the male students in one line, and give them some numbers and choosing the every third male to your sample. Uh, so this, this, or the every, so every case uh, male to your sample, where K is going to be, for example, the Fibonacci number or the prime numbers and so on. So the systematic sampling is we choose the first member, so the starting point randomly. Then we're, we are going to choose every nth member or some systematic, so some, some members in using some formula systematically. So the choosing the sample, so the sampling method is really important because depending on the sampling method, we might get dramatically different conclusions. So one of the really amazing and, 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 and dramatic examples of the sampling error or sampling method, influence of the sampling method is from the World War II, where the British decided to add more and more to their bombers. So they've got the, uh, so they, they've got, so this is the two pictures of the bombers. So this, the, on, the, on the left, you can see the picture of the bomber before they go, they, they went to the war. So another is the picture of the bomber, which is came back from the, from, from the battle. So the black, um, black areas on the right picture is the holes, the bullet holes, which has been received in the battles. So the British, they wanted to make more and more and the uh, bombers and they wanted to make it so they wanted to decide where to put more and more so the problem is they can't put more and more to every place of the bomber because in this case it's going to be very very heavy and it's not so efficient so uh, so the people thought that they need to add more and more to the places which they which have more holes but the upper and wall the statistician the hungarian statistician has suggested actually to add more moles uh, to the places without the holes. And, and yeah, so it helped a lot to the British Army and, and it actually shows about the wrong sampling or the importance of the sampling method because so the, actually the, uh, the bombers which had the holes in those places in the white regions, they didn't come back. And including more and more to the places without the holes was the was the good decision. So another like uh, the the um, um, popular example of the wrong sampling is from the uh, presidential elections in U.S. from 1936. So the Literary Digest, it's a magazine which was really famous uh, because it successfully predicted the presidential elections in 1916, 1920, 24, 28, and 32. In 1936, uh, in a contest between Alf Landon and Franklin Griswold, the magazine sent out 10 million ballots and received 1.3 1 million ballots for the Landon and 0 0.97 million for the Griswold. At the same time, the George Gallup, so he is the founder of the Gallup Poll Company, used a much smaller uh, poll of 50,000 subjects and correctly predicted the Roosevelt will win. So the, 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 they predict, so the literary digest said, said, say that the probability, so the number of the 
per percentage of the votes um, um, given to Roosevelt is going to be around uh, 40%. And the Gallup poll predicted that the percentage of the votes given to the Roosevelt is going to be around 57%. And Roosevelt has got actually 60%. So the, the difference between the two, so the, the, the problem why they've got, the, like a, so why the Gallup poll has got better result, even with a smaller sample, is about the sampling method. So the literary digest has sent out to 10 million ballots to every people, and the people who wanted to answer, so they sent back the ballots, and the, at the same time, George Gallup, so the, he basically classified, stratified the people by their social or the uh, social position or by the ages. Uh, 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 then he got the people from each of the stratas and made the conclusions uh, from that sample. So basically, he, he, his sampling method was better. So sometimes the sample size is important but sometimes the sampling method is important as well.